Welcome to A Night with Otter Athletics, a virtual event presented by Smashburger. Before we begin our program, we would like to review some Zoom housekeeping items with you. Today's webinar is being recorded. Please note, in a Zoom webinar, you will only be able to see and hear the presenters in today's event. Your video and audio will not be available for this presentation. So please sit back and enjoy all the stories, updates, and the look forward into the next year. Today's presentation includes a live transcript option. To view the live transcript, please use the live transcript icon located on your Zoom toolbar as shown on the screen. There are options to view subtitles, the full transcript, and you can also adjust the font size as desired. And you can turn off the subtitles under this option if desired. If you need assistance while viewing today's webinar, please email our event staff at specialevents at csumb.edu. We are monitoring this email and will respond to assist you. And with that, let's get this started. Bring it in.
Good evening, and welcome to a night with Otter Athletics. On behalf of all of our coaches, staff, administration, and our 250 student athletes, I want to say thank you for being here with us tonight. My name is Mo Melhart, and I have had the honor of serving as the head volleyball coach here at CSUMB since 2015. Like all of my fellow coaches, I am thankful to be an Otter and proud of our student athletes and all we have done to get through the past year. It is no secret this year has been trying, yet through it all, we are here. You are here, and we all continue to support and believe in Otter Athletics. As you may have seen in the intro video, that although this has been tough, our amazing student athletes continue to work hard, train hard, and find a way regardless of the circumstances. What you didn't see in that video was everything else. The long hours on the computer, in class, in tutoring, the countless emails back and forth with professors, student athletes taking care of their families, working part-time jobs, virtual team meetings, and so many other responsibilities that our student athletes have. But through it all, they are resilient. They believe and know the value of hard work, and I believe that it will pay off in a major way. Tonight is a special night. As we look forward to 2021 and what it will bring, we will hear from some of our amazing coaches, current and former student athletes, and our athletic director, Kirby Gary, on the lessons and triumphs and the hopes for what's to come. Tonight is about hearing our story, where we've been, and the hope for what lies ahead. In planning this event, we thought who better to help us tell these stories than a man who has been a fan of Otter Athletics from almost the very beginning. You may know his voice and perhaps for some, it will reignite your love for the Otters. A 16 year veteran on the radio, an Otter Athletics Fund supporter, and a great friend to our coaches, our staff, alumni, and current student athletes here to MC tonight's program, the voice of the Otters, Rob Ponce. And thanks very much, Mo. And once again, welcome to a night with Otter Athletics. This evening, you will learn and see how Otter Athletics will restart as we move toward reopening. And we begin this evening talking to the CSUMB Athletic Director, that of course is Kirby Gary. Kirby has been the CSUMB Athletic Director for seven years and with the Athletic Department for 14 years. Kirby is currently the vice chair of the NCAA Division II Membership Committee, and he holds key positions in the Division II Athletic Directors Association. Prior to coming to CSUMB, Kirby held administrative and coaching positions at Washington State University, Idaho State University, and the University of South Dakota. Kirby enters his eighth year as athletic director, facing one of the greatest challenges for an athletic director that of course is restarting an athletic program shut down due to a worldwide pandemic. And Kirby, I'm sure the first question is on the mind of a lot who are in the audience tonight and that's this. Kirby, what will the athletic program look like when it restarts during the upcoming academic year? Well, first of all, Rob, thank you for being here with us tonight and thanks for everything you've done for us over the years. It's just, uh, it's nice to get back into a conversation with you. It feels almost normal. So thank you, first of all. You know, what's it gonna look like in the upcoming year? I, I imagine it being everything that all of us are thinking about, super excited, um, anxious, nervous. Um, but I, I think we'll go into the fall with, with gratitude and, and, and very humbly after, after this year that we've um, endured as a program, um, as a department, as a university. Um, and, and really anticipating all that's in front of us. Very motivated group of coaches, extremely motivated group of student athletes, getting back to what they love to do. And that's to train, practice, compete, and, and represent CSCMB in, in competition. Kirby, what are the things that you and your staff are doing to prepare for the restarting of the program? Well, you know, you, you know, going back to what it looks like in the fall, right? We, we certainly are going to have health and safety protocols that we will have to follow. Um, those are evolving and changing every day. They have been for almost a year. Um, but vaccinations, testing protocols, masking, things, things won't look totally the same. But we're, we're prepared and confident that we, can, that we can put our athletes and coaches in great position to be safe and healthy and to do what they love to do. From a, from a staffing standpoint, really, we need to scale back up. In the last year... Uh, we've had reassignments, layoffs, um, non-renewals. So we've, we've lost some staff um, in a way. 
um, but almost kept everybody nearby. Same, same with our student athletes. So we need to scale back up. We have some positions open. Um, we have recruitments out there for uh, a head athletic trainer, an assistant athletic director. We have a sports information position that needs to be refilled. So we, we need to scale back up. And so as we've been scaling back up in staffing, that's what we'll be doing this spring. Uh, we continue to have a parallel planning process with our CCA colleagues, um, ADs and the CCAA, as we look forward to as we look forward to the fall. Now, we're talking about returning to normalcy. And with that in mind, will all of the 13 sports at CSUMB return with a full season schedule, which will include CCAA and non-conference competition? You're getting right to it here, Rob. That's great. All right. Um, you, know, you know, we anticipate, yes, we anticipate a full, I mean, our priority is a full conference schedule. And that includes the WWPA in water polo. So um, our, our CCA presence, which include 12, um, Cal State presidents have a have our CCA um, presidents board meeting on April 30, 30th. So officially, um, we'll know more after that meeting. But we certainly anticipate getting back to a full conference schedule, a non-conference schedule, competing for conference championships, competing to 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 qualify for NCAA postseason, and do things everything that we dream of doing in college athletics. You know, Kirby. Of course, we want to talk about the move forward toward restarting, but I'm sure. We can't let the evening go without looking at the past year. And what was what were the factors that led to the decision to shut the program down during the pandemic? And what are the things that you had to consider? And what were the actions that you took about a year ago about this time? Well, I think I think it, it, it's really grounded in a really basic principle. I mean, college athletics. Um, is different than pro sports. It's college athletics, collegiate athletes are first and foremost students. So we grounded our philosophy on the fact that we would re-socialize college athletics at CSUMB when we re-socialize our campus. So we've been exclusively remote um, for over a year. We're, as a university under Eduardo Ochoa's um, leadership, have had a, had a very strong and consistent plan throughout the whole year to be prepared to come back when it's safe for our campus community. So really it, it's, um, you know, I, I know there's a lot out there. I know there's a lot of different um, opinions and debates on the topics of when we should or shouldn't come back. Um, but we've been very comfortable and confident in our approach as a university because it was based on health and safety. And again, grounded in a basic principle that our, our college athletes are students first. And we were not gonna re-socialize in college athletics at CSUMB until we re-socialize our campus. So that's the planning that's going on right now. We've had announcements that have come out around housing on campus being at 100% capacity in the fall. So announcements will continue to come out from the university side that show us the way back in athletics because we are a part of our campus. The Division II athletics, the beauty of Division II athletics and the balance that we have between academics and athletics and personal development for our athletes, it's really has stuck to the nature of that in, in, in how we've approached the, the pandemic. And, and, um, and we're prepared. We're prepared to come back with the with the full allotment of our positions, our budget has remained untouched. We have we have the ability to come back strong and put our coaches and student athletes in a position to be successful in the fall. You know, Kirby, we're going to hear more from you later on in this program, but I think it's time now to uh, talk to a couple of the coaches to, that have had to endure the past year. Uh, back in March of last year, the last athletic event that occurred was a water polo match. And so with that, we thought it would be appropriate to talk to Emily Schmidt, the water polo coach at Cal State Monterey Bay. Emily has been the water polo coach since 2016. And prior to coming to CSUMB, she coached the club teams at Cal Berkeley, the University of Arizona. And she was the assistant water polo coach at the University of the Pacific and was the head men's and women's water polo coach at De Anza College. And again, she had the distinction of coaching the last athletic event. So you now have the distinction of reopening our program from a coach's perspective. And with that, to Emily, first question, when you learned that the season was abruptly ended due to the COVID-19 pandemic, what was the team's reaction? And what did you and the team do in response to the sudden shutdown? Well, first, thank you for having me. Um, yeah. Looking back on that day uh, in March 2020, it was a really, really exciting day coming off that win against McKendry. Um, you know, we were disappointed that our season was being shut down. Um, 
we were ready to, to take that win and roll into our conference, conference play. And, um, and so it was, it was hard. Um, well, we were really lucky. Uh, we were able to have one more practice. Uh, we were able to play some water polo, have fun with it. We were able to laugh together, cry together, um, give each other one last hug before we said goodbye. Um, and I know that that's an opportunity that a lot of other teams didn't have. Emily, talk about the emotional challenge that you and the team faced. Emotionally, it must have been difficult, particularly for the seniors who have had their season ended through no fault of their own. Well, certainly, um, you know, back in, in March 2020, I don't think anybody anticipated that we would still not be together uh, 15 months later. And uh, we don't have just one class of seniors that didn't have their senior season. We have two classes of seniors that didn't have their senior season. Um, and um, we can't wait to, to get back to the otter tank. And when we do, we're going to invite the class of 2020 and 2021 back um, to thank them, celebrate them, and uh, for all that they've done and sacrificed for the team. And, you know, we're, we're looking forward to that moment. You know, as the CSU and B water polo coach, Emily, what were the challenges that you faced during the COVID pandemic this past year? And, and how did you confront those challenges? It's a great question. I think the first challenge um, is not unique to our program. Um, it's really the unknown. You know, we didn't know when we were going to be coming back. Um, so we, you know, like how do you train? How do you keep up motivation um, when you don't know when you get to, to play your sport, play your game again, and be back together with your teammates and your family? Um, and then the, the other challenge I think that is very unique to our sport being that we are an aquatic contact team sport um, was we didn't have access to water. COVID shut down most of the pools, um, certainly shut down contact team sports. Um, and so our, our players were, were left to be really creative with, um, with how they were gonna stay in shape. Um, some of them turned to the ocean uh, to get their swims in, uh, you saw some ocean passing, uh, they're wearing wetsuits there, um, but, and you saw our goalies using, doing some reflex drills. So a lot of creativity. Um, and we, you know, I'm just really, really fortunate that I have such an awesome assistant coach, Amanda Jennings, and, um, and a great team leadership uh, on, on the team to help collaborate and, and be creative and come up with new ideas and, and keep the motivation and, and focus there. Uh, coach, Give us an overview, if you can, of what to expect from the uh, CSU and B water polo program this year. Well, first we got to get back in the water. Uh, we're so excited to that, that there's a there's a date that we get to get back in the water. Well, not an exact date, but you know it's there. Like the finish line is there. Um, we got to get comfortable with uh, making contact with other humans again, and that's it's going to be interesting. You know, being aggressive with with your teammates when you haven't been able to touch anybody in 15 months, um, and and then be back in a warm pool and get that training in. Um, it's to get back into shape after being out of the water for over a year is going to be hard, um, but we're used to hard. We like hard, um, and then we get to integrate two new classes in, and that's the fun part. So we're looking forward to introducing the class of 2024 and 2025. You know, uh, Coach uh, Emily, as you transition from having to shelter in, not practicing, not competing, and not having athletes and students on campus toward reopening and restarting the water polo program, how important is community support and involvement to the team during this move back toward normalcy? I mean, it's our, our community, our alumni, our family, and our friends, um, our surrounding Monterey Bay area. Uh, that's what makes MBE Athletics special. Um, we can't wait until our stands are full and they're loud and they're shaking. Uh, we know that that might be a slow, slow progression, but we can't wait to have you back. We really couldn't do it. We wouldn't be here without, without our family, without our raft. Uh, Emily Schmidt, water polo coach at Cal State Monterey Bay. Thank you very much for being part of the program tonight. And of course, the best of luck to you and the water polo players this year. Okay, well, let's Thank go ahead so and talk to the coach whose program is on the rise. 
a coach that, uh, of course, is, uh, we all know, and uh, I'll be uh, selfish and say he's a good friend of ours, a good friend of mine, and it's great to have him back with us again, Isaac Williams. A little bit about uh, Isaac's background. He was a head men's basketball coach at uh, Eastern, U uh, Eastern Oregon University, where he compiled a record of 120 and 41, averaging 24 wins per season and having at least 19 wins in each of those five years. He's been the head basketball coach here at Cal State Monterey Bay since 2017. And each of the three years he's coached, the team has shown improvement, continual improvement and increased winning. And with optimism for continued improvement and hopes for a winning record, Coach Williams will be entering his fourth year of competition as the CSUMB men's basketball coach. And coach, certainly it's good to see you again. Well, Rob, uh... I, like everybody else, I appreciate so much um, you doing this and you do such a wonderful job. And this almost feels like we're, we're doing a pregame talk. So I'm getting a little bit pumped up right now. So this, we're back into our old habit, which is, is great. Yeah, Isaac, with the 2019-20, when the 2019-2020 season ended, the Otters had 10 wins, which is the most that the basketball program had since the 2015-16 season. And then the pandemic hit. And then there was no basketball for a year. With that in mind, how did the shutdown affect you and the basketball program? Well, you know what? Uh, for me, basketball has always been an outlet for when things hadn't been going very well in whatever other area of my life. And so to not have that to lean on uh, was certainly difficult. But um, being older and having the guys to um, help kind of keep things in perspective for me was actually really helpful. And I know for them, um, it had to be incredibly hard because so much of their, uh, who they are as people is wrapped up into being a college athlete, Cal State Monterey Bay. So not being able to be together and um, not being able to, in some places, go to a gym or even play on an outdoor court because they had taken, excuse me, taken the rims off um, was tough. So, um, it's been a tough year. Um, but thankfully we have an unbelievable group of guys, um, and they kind of, they helped me and hopefully in some way I have a chance to help them as well. How has the pandemic affected your program in terms of recruiting? Yeah, you know what? I think like most people recruiting, um, has seen so many changes. You know, I think, Coaches get used to making decisions on personnel based on the feel that they get when they are with them face to face and when they meet their parents or maybe you're in their living room or you watch them the fifth time in two days play a game and you see how they react to adversity or success or whatever and not having any of those things and having to um, really recruit based on film and Zooms and FaceTimes and text messages and, you know, it's certainly different. Um, but luckily for us, we've built up a good network of coaches, both youth coaches at AU and high school coaches, um, that we could lean on them and trust them uh, to give us good insight on who the people were. And, you know, to be quite honest, we just had to work quite a bit harder to get to know the kids that we would want to have in our program. You know, normally, you know, you have when you're around them and you get to see them, um, you know, when you're doing this for as long as we have, it becomes a little bit easier. You know, right now it's tougher and it requires more work. And so uh, we've had plenty of time to do that work since we've had no games to practice or <laughs> anything like that. Well, Coach, you know, one of the intangible factors you and I talk about a lot is a phrase called culture of winning. And give your assessment as to how your work in the developing that culture of winning at Cal State Monterey Bay was at the end of the last year that you played, that was 20, uh, 19, 20, 20. And how did the academic, or rather the pandemic shutdown affect it? You know what, um, a great story. We were, we were on the road, um, actually the week before everything shut down, we were on the road in Southern California and uh, we had just lost. We had gotten beaten pretty good um, by a really good team. And uh, we were out having a post game meal and a lot of the guys were talking about how much they were looking forward to the summer um, and working out and then looking forward to the future because we kind of felt like for the first time, you know, since we've been at Monterey, we really had a great collection of people who fit the culture of what we wanted to do moving forward. And 
Um, there was just so much excitement around it. And literally maybe three days later, um, everything was canceled and shut down. And uh, so we've had to work really hard, you know, keeping the guys together, you know, being mindful that they're in front of a screen basically every day for Zoom classes, um, you know, and they're already connected to the internet all day long, especially when things were shut down uh, locally and they had to you know, play video games to spend time or whatever they were doing that was so um, just screen oriented. We, we tried to make sure that we had a balance of staying connected to them, but not overwhelming them. Um, but it was, it certainly wasn't easy. Um, but we feel like, you know, our guys, the best part is they just were looking forward to coming back next year. Everything that we felt that last weekend that we played games, we just kind of was a theme that we had all summer long and into the fall and just kind of like, let's stick together and we got a lot to look forward to and, and we'll just get through this stuff together. And last question, coach, and that's this, you know, during a regular season, fans attend your games. You and I work together during our radio broadcasts and internet webcasts. But right now, as you prepare to transition from a shutdown to a full season, a lot of community support is needed. Tell us how important community support is to the men's basketball program. It, this cannot be overstated that the, the Walking into um, the arena and being able to see people and our, the way they interact with our guys. I mean, I, I love coming up from my office and walking through those doors and seeing our group of guys behind the women's bench watching their game and seeing fans walk in and all the regulars, you know, say hi and stop in. I know the guys walk by you and tap you on the shoulder as you're preparing for the game. And um, I mean, that, that, has so much importance and and i when i look back my own college career um you know like those relationships that you know seemed like they were just kind of casual at the time some of those are still going um a lot of years later i won't say how many but many years later i have a relationship with those people and um i know our guys appreciate it so much um, not just the people who come to the games but people that we see when we're out in the community doing you know, campus beautification or whatever. I think it's um, Monterey Peninsula has so much support for our programs and I look forward to giving them something that they can really enjoy with the basketball team. That's really uh, a wonderful group of guys um, that I would expect to be quite a bit more competitive and exciting to watch as well. Coach, thanks very much for having joined us. And again, personally, it's great to see you again. <laughs> All means we're looking forward to a, a season with you coming up. Thank you, Rob. Let's go back and hear from Kirby Gary. And uh, at this point, he's got a special presentation for us. Okay. Sorry about that little delay. Um, thank you, everybody. It's so great to hear from Emily and Isaac. Uh, Rob, thank you again. Um, you know, I, I wanted to take a few minutes to, to go over really the foundation of our program and of our department. Um, and I, I truly believe that, that our ability to come back from this year, our ability to stick together through the year and our student athletes resilience um, and their ability to stay connected to their coaches is really grounded in the principles that we talk about on a daily basis. It's what our coaches recruit to. I think it's why we are here, I really do. Um, our student athletes have, have done an amazing job of staying enrolled, engaged, and on track towards a degree this entire year. Um, and, and this buildup as we get back to the fall is just gonna allow them to really um, fulfill their true identity and why they're at CSUMB is to compete and represent our university. So um, give me a few minutes here. We're gonna go through our mission, vision, and values. Uh, we have some slides here. Um, these are things that we talk about typically at the start of an academic year with all of our student athletes. We certainly talk about it as coaches and staff throughout the year. Um, and we'll start here with our vision. Our mission, I'm sorry. Our mission is we will serve, challenge, and support each other in pursuit of success. We will empower our student athletes to earn a degree, train and compete for championships, and develop as responsible leaders. The next slide, please. Our vision. Our vision at Cal State Monterey will be the premier college athletics brand in the Monterey Bay region and a division two leader in our pursuit of student athlete success. This is really important. You know, we, we're surrounded by 
um, different organizations, different levels of schools and institutions, different levels of athletics. Um, Division II athletics is special. Um, Monterey Bay is special. Cal State Monterey Bay is special. And our ability to really become um, a premier location for college athletics in Monterey Bay in our region is our goal. That's our vision. And to be a, and to be a leader in Division II, we're going to host the, the CCA softball championships next spring. We're scheduled to host CCA baseball championships the following spring, a CCA cross country championships coming up. We want to host championship events in our area. Either we're going to earn them or we're going to bid for them and they're going to bring them here because of our beautiful place. So this is a big part of our vision moving forward and how we'll grow. Next slide, please. Our values, you know, it, it just happens so that our values spell otters. Why not, right? So um, I'm going to go through each one here quickly, but our values spell otters. Opportunity, trust, teamwork, empowerment, respect, and service. Next slide. We embrace the opportunity to learn, grow, and compete while aspiring to achieve big goals. Success is where preparation and opportunity meet. Next slide. Trust. We build trust through open communication and fulfilling intentions. Success in any relationship or endeavor begins with trust. Next slide. Teamwork. We draw strength from every member of our team in pursuit of success. Student athlete success is a team game. Empowerment. We build strength, confidence, and accountability through challenging experiences and positive leadership. Empowered teams take ownership and commit the energy necessary for success. Respect. We honor ourselves and others with dignity, civility, and compassion while embracing the principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Respect is a key component to building and sustaining successful teams. And service. We encourage giving without expecting anything in return. A spirit of gratitude and service to others leads to success. And what a great picture. We had an MPUSD partnership. Again, this is just prior to COVID. Um, and uh, gosh, that just picture just brings back uh, great memories and smiles that we can't wait to get back to that. Next slide. And again, just a reminder, this is why our student athletes and coaches have come to Monterey Bay is the opportunity to compete for championships. Again, if we stick to our values of opportunity, trust, teamwork, empowerment, respect, and service, if that is the foundation and that's our why, we have talented head coaches that are recruiting high profile student athletes to our university. We can't wait to get back to work and, and compete for championships. Thank you. Okay, with that in mind, we're going to be talking to the CSUMB Otters Athletics Player of the Year, and that is none other than Caitlin Rooney. And Caitlin is a member of the water polo team at Cal State Monterey Bay. In her sophomore year, she was named the CSUMB Otters Athletics Player of the Year. In her freshman year, she was named to the Western Water Polo Association All-Freshman Team. She played in all 27 matches as a freshman, scoring 73 points. That's the fourth highest in a season in CSUMB history. She is co-president of SAAC, SAC, which is the acronym for the Student Athletic Advisory Committee of CSUMB. And with the athletic programs restarting and a promising outlook, perhaps, of, re of students returning to campus, uh, Caitlin will address these two uh, issues. And so welcome, Caitlin. It's good to see you. Good to be here. <laughs> okay, Caitlin, when everything was shut down and the impact of COVID-19, the pandemic took effect, how did you as a student athlete, how, what was the impact upon you? It was definitely hard. Um, as uh, Coach Isaac said, being a student athlete is such a big part of our identity. Um, and when that kind of got taken away, it was a big shock for a lot of us. Definitely with, you know, classes being mostly online, um, it's been very difficult, especially as a marine science major. Most of my classes are normally um, in the field or in a lab. So it's been a big change. 
Um, for athletics wise, you know, training has been completely different. We've had to get very creative with the way that we're working out and staying in shape. And I think there's been a really big um, mentality shift as well. I mean, a year ago, it went from this huge win um, and then the next day being shut down. I remember looking back at my seniors and seeing them realize they just played the last game of their college career and they didn't even know it was heartbreaking. Um, so moving forward, I think we're gonna see, and I think I can speak for all the student athletes that we're gonna be playing our games like it could be our last game. We're gonna put all of our effort out on the, the court, the field, the pool um, and giving it our all because it's more fun that way. Caitlin, what was it like to spend a full year in distance learning? It's been different. Um, there's been ups and downs. Um, it's, it's definitely hard to spend all of your time on a screen every day. I think kids will actually maybe spend less time on their phones after the pandemic, because I know I don't want to spend more time on a screen anymore. Um, and it's been difficult to form those connections that you used to do face to face with your peers and your classmates. You can't go to the library and work on an assignment. Um, you have to do it on Zoom. And it's, it's been really hard to, you know, build those connections with your professors, especially being a, a junior or a senior, you really rely on those years to, you know, network and make connections for your future. Um, so it's, it's been harder to do that without being face to face, for sure. Of course, you're a water polo player, a star water polo player, and you were away from the pool and you didn't have access to the pool. And with that in mind, what did you do to try and remain sharp and keep those instincts intact uh, as a water polo player during this past year? Yeah, pools have been, you know, some of the last things to reopen um, as far as, you know, gyms and facilities. So it's, it's been hard to, you know, find times to swim. Um, but I know I'm fortunate enough and some of my teammates are fortunate enough to live close to the beach. Um, so we're using the world's biggest and most mysterious pool out there, um, the ocean, to be able to swim um, and, you know, get some leg workouts in. We can tread water. Um, so I was passing in the um, intro video. We're, we're really adapting to the situations that we've been given. I think student athletes are um, the best uh, people to adapt to what they're given um, and we're making it work. Um, we're doing a lot of strength and conditioning and mobility exercises. Um, you know, you don't need fancy equipment um, or a pool to do those things and it, it really helps you to stay in shape and um, make sure you're healthy when we all return in the fall. That has got to be an incredible challenge. The pool in a pool, the water is flat and still. Out of the ocean, you're facing these swells and waves and let alone fish, dolphins, otters, and a yeah. fear of maybe a shark. <laughs> so that, that had to have been just incredibly challenging for you. Keeps it exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as you know, the college experience is more than just learning and studying. Social interaction is a big part of the college experience. What was it like not being around other students and friends? Yeah, it's been hard, um, especially as someone who's an extrovert. I love being around people um, and hanging out with my friends. It's, it's been a transition to do that over Zoom and FaceTime. Um, I still try and, you know, reach out to my friends and family as much as I can. I think I've, you know, reached out to some people that I probably wouldn't have if, um, you know, the pandemic wouldn't have hit. I think the sense of community has actually grown while we've all been kind of apart, which is a good thing. Um, and 
uh, one of the biggest things that we do in SAC is, um, you know, we do a lot of volunteering and community outreach. And it's not only a great way to, you know, get our teams to work together and, and get to know each other while we're um, helping out the community, but it's also a great way to engage um, our community members. You know, they love having us come and help them out um, and be a part of their events. And they love coming, watching us play our games. It's, it's a really big um, family that we have here. And it's, it's something that we've missed out on in the last year, but it's something that we're really excited for moving in the future. Caitlin, hey, thanks very much for having joined us tonight. I'm sure I speak on behalf of a lot when they say that you are a prime example of what a student athlete should be. Thank you. Okay, now let's um, turn our attention to the past. We've talked to Caitlin, who is uh, the star of the present. And of course, when we talk about the past, Shane Olds Brocker, Shay Olds Brocker was a standout for the CSU and B softball team from 2007 through 2011. Her outstanding career for the Otters led her to her induction into the CSU and B Otters Hall of Fame. She was a part of the 2008 softball team, which was the first Otter team to appear in an NCAA postseason tournament. She was also a member of the 2009 softball team which was the uh, first team that won the CCAA tournament championship. And she was also a part of the 2010 softball team, the first in school history to win the CCAA championship. Now, here are her statistics. As an otter, Shea had 44 home runs, which ranks number two in CCAA conference history. She is the school's all-time leader in batting average, slugging percentage, on-base percentage, home runs, RBIs and walks. It's always a pleasure to speak to distinguished CSU and B alumni, of which Shay Brocker is certainly one. And Shay, welcome to tonight's presentation. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be back with my Otter family. Now, Shay, of all the accomplishments that you achieved as a CSU and B Otter, what stands out above the rest? Um, I would say, you know, I. I really did enjoy being a part. I was involved a lot off the field, right? So I was a part of SAC. And I think something that really sticks with me to this day was getting selected to go to the NCAA Leadership Conference. Um, personal development is a big part of my life. And I recently realized when I was thinking like, where did that spark? Like, where did that kind of start in my life? And I realized it was through those opportunities that I had through CSUMB and being involved off the field. So of course, I, you know, it's always fun to have these great athletic accomplishments, but I really think um, what I did off the field is what sticks with me the most to this day. Shay, what was it about CSUMB that made you decide to become an otter? Um, you know, it was kind of a last minute decision, me coming to CSUMB, to be honest. And um, I really think the draw for me was the size. I think that I would just thrive in a smaller community, which I did. And I just love the camaraderie that CSUMB provided. And like I said, just that intimate experience that most big colleges don't provide. Okay, and as you look back at your career at CSUMB, what are some of the biggest takeaways, the lessons that you learned while a CSUMB otter that, that you'll be taking away for life? I mean, definitely my winning mindset. I am a very competitive person, but I'm also very driven and hardworking. And I think my time at CSUMB really instilled that in me, along with you know being a leader and working with all different types of personalities. Um, I think that really translated into life after sports and has served me in everything I've done since I left CSUMB, which I'm grateful for. Uh, Shay, do you keep in contact with uh, Coach Andrea Kinney and your friends and former teammates? Oh, definitely. I have a great relationship with Coach K. We keep in contact often. And some of my best friends to this day are old teammates and classmates at CSUMB. So that's what I love about CSUMB. It's just such a tight-knit group and we keep relationships for years to come. And so, yes, I love my Otter family. I'm a proud Otter. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Are you doing anything to stay involved with CSUMB Athletics? Yeah, definitely. I'm always, you know, I always keep in contact to see how things are going. And, you know, in 2020, I did a Zoom call with the current softball team. 
coach asked me to come on and just talk to them about leadership and my experience. So that was a really neat opportunity to connect with the current players and just kind of get back um, with the Otter community and, and share my experience. Okay, Shay, let's stay down memory lane. Uh, give us your answer to this. Is there a favorite memory you have during your time at Cal State Monterey Bay? I mean, there's so many, but I honestly, and I think I can appreciate this now that I'm like 10 years removed. You don't like appreciate the little things in the moments, but my road trips with my teammates and traveling and being able to go on the bus to different places, being able to fly to different places to compete. Like I said, I don't know if I appreciated it as much as I do now. And I would give anything to go on a road trip with my, my teammates. So I think that that's what really stands out the most that really built our camaraderie and our friendships. Okay, now let's talk about the present. Tell us about your current situation. I understand now that the, uh, your, you know, of course your last name is now Brocker. It was Olds when you were an otter and uh, you now are a resident of Austin, Texas. So uh, tell us what you're up to now. Yeah, so my husband who I met at CSUMB actually in Coach K's class where we got married a couple years ago and just four months ago we moved out here to Austin, Texas, just to be honest, just to kind of get out of our comfort zone and do something different. So we live here now and, um, you know, after I finished my degree in kinesiology at CSUMB, I got my master's in sport management at the University of San Francisco. And um, I've worked in different facets of the sports industry for the last 10 years, but currently I'm the communications director for Advantage Athletic Training, which is an athletic training staffing company. And I love doing that because athletic trainers were such a huge part of my sports career and they took such good care of me. So to be able to contribute to their profession in a small way is something that I really appreciate. And I'm also a life and success coach and I help women build confidence to pursue their personal passions. So I keep very busy, but my schedule at CSUMB prepared me well for that. <laughs> Shay, you couldn't have gone from more, more two different worlds from the California coast and the land of the otters to the land of hook em horns and <laughs> dry, hot Texas weather. <laughs> okay, last question. It's a softball for you, excuse the pun. What are your plans? to become a forever otter? Well, I will always stay connected to my otter family. I'll always be present and um, open to doing things like this. I'm so excited that I was invited to do this tonight because I am far away from California now. So this feels kind of nice to be in Texas and be able to connect with my family back in California. So um, just staying involved in the with the softball program, with the athletics department, um, supporting however I can, I will do that forever because like I said, I'm an otter for life and I rep the otters wherever I go. Shay, great talking to you. Wonderful seeing you again. And by all means, the best of luck to you as your future endeavors continue. Thanks for having me, Rob. I appreciate it. Okay. This time that wraps up our interviews with our coaches and players. And let's go ahead and go back and turn our attention to Mo Mel Hart, who has a special presentations. Well, thank you, Rob. And um, I just want to echo um, a huge thank you to our coaches and to um, Caitlin Rooney and um, Shay Brocker for just being with us tonight and just sharing their experiences because they um, truly, it's what, it's what makes us so special. Um, I hope you were able to hear um, all, of, all of the things that makes us unique. Um, if we had more time, I would love for you to hear from all 12 of our amazing head coaches and all of our student athletes because their stories are truly remarkable. Um, but as we've all heard, um, and as we I'm sure all felt, the Zoom fatigue is real. Um, so we wanna honor and respect your time being here with us tonight. Um, over the past year, we've been working closely with our development team to reevaluate, recreate, and relaunch the official Otter Athletic Fund. This is an annual fund designed to raise financial support for all of our amazing student athletes to further enhance their experiences as otters. As you may know, our student athletes continue to strive for success in the classroom, the community, as well as competitively. Our student athlete cumulative GPA is a 3.34, with 116 student athletes earning all academic, all conference awards through the 2019-2020 school year. In addition to that, our department averages over 2,000 community service hours per year, which is something we're so proud of and we're so thankful to have a community that allows us to give back in any way that we can. 
In addition to all of that, our proven continued competitive success shows through our 18 CCAA conference championships, many of which Shea Brocker was a part of, countless CCAA all-conference athletes, as well as a men's golf national championship in 2011. All of this is made possible because of the support of so many to help enhance the experience of our student athletes, but there's much more to be done. The Otter Athletics Fund has four levels of contributions with matching incentives as a small way to show our true gratitude for your generosity. All giving levels are tax deductible and will include our biannual Otter Athletics e-newsletter, invitations to official Otter Athletics Funds events, and access to our official Otter Athletics Adidas Team Store, where you will be able to, where you will have the chance to shop and buy official team gear not found anywhere else. So parents, um, all those, all that cool gear that your kids come home with, you'll have a chance to order that yourself with the sport of your choosing. Annual contributions made to the Otter Athletic Fund can go directly to the sport of your choosing or simply to the department as a whole. The funds raised throughout the year will support scholarship, equipment, travel, and program specific needs, all in the name of helping our coaches and student athletes strive for success both on and off the court. I would like to highlight our Raft Club as it is unique to CSUMB. It's only for athlete alumni, former trainers and coaches, as we believe that their continued support both financially and otherwise should be something recognized in a special way. Over the past year alone, through foundation, corporation, parent, staff, faculty, alumni, and fan support, we have raised over $600,000 for our student athletes. And in doing so, the culture of giving back to Otter Athletics continues to be a big part of who we are. Although this financial support over the past year is significant, and we are very grateful for the generosity of so many, we continue to get more competitive across the board. Our programs will need the sustained contribution from people like you through the Otter Athletics Fund to get to the next level. You are all here tonight because you are somehow connected to Otter Athletics. Perhaps you are a parent, an alum, a professor, a community member, or a fan. No matter your connection to us, you are part of something special that continues to grow academically and competitively. And we need people like yourselves to help us continue on this journey. The Otter Athletics Fund is something we are excited to launch, and we hope that if it is possible for you to join our team and be part of what we have here, that you'll do so. In fact, for the first 10 people to join the Otter Athletics Fund, you will receive a $25 Smashburger gift card, all thanks to the continued support of one of our local corporate partnerships. Just another small way we can show our true gratitude to you for your generosity and belief in what we're doing here. I wanna thank you for being here with us this evening and for spending time with us and being part of something special at CSUMB. I'd like to give a special thank you to our president, Dr. Eduardo Ochoa, vice president for university advancement, Barbara Zappas, acting vice president for administration and finance and chief financial officer, Steve Mackey, vice president for strategic initiative and executive director of university corporation, Larry Samuels, Provost Dr. Catherine Kancharjif, and former Vice President of Administration and Finance and newly retired but forever Otter fan, Kevin Saunders. I would also like to thank our staff and faculty. They have been through so much this year, and we are so thankful for everything that you do for CSUMB to make it a special place full of love and commitment to our student athletes. I would also like to thank Dave Richards and his team at Smashburger for their continued support and partnership with Otter Athletics and their sponsorship for tonight's event. We are looking forward to having all of you back on campus in the future and continue to watch, cheer, and support all of our student athletes as they continue to excel in the classroom and in their fields of competition. Your contributions, both financially and otherwise, make a significant impact on so many. And for that, we are so grateful. On behalf of all of us here at Otter Athletics, I wanna thank you for your support, for believing in what we're doing. We all look forward to the day when the fields, the pool, the track, the course, and the kelp bed are once again full with all of you cheering for our amazing student athletes. But until that time, stay safe, stay healthy, and go Otters.